Hello and welcome to Roanoke Hobby and Electronics. In this video, we're going to continue with our series with the uh, Hexaware, the wearable Internet of Things device, and we're going to um, we're going to get it connected to the cloud. So uh, we've got the Hexaware device that uh, we've looked at in uh, the first two uh, videos in this series, and um, I'm going to uh, use an Android phone. Uh, I've, I have found that the app on the Android phone um, connects much more reliably. I've, I've had uh, this, this uh, Hexaware connected with this phone the entire afternoon, and I've actually uh, have been had, wore it for a couple hours and uh, did some walking and got some exercise and actually collected some data. So that's what we're going to do in the third segment here. And we're going to look at uh, collecting the data up on the cloud uh, with the Hexaware. Uh, so you have um, some useful data to look at. And also um, at the end there, we're going to take a look at a, uh, a way of programming an app that uh, you can run on your phone to, to, to do some specific things with the data. So uh, all that will be coming up next. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, I've uh, switched over to an Android phone and I have got an app um, that uh, very consistently uh, connects with the uh, with the Hexaware, and we'll just zoom in here a little bit closer. And um, also on on this phone, the I can actually pick up the screen there a little bit, a little bit better. Still got some glare, but um, you can actually see that it's uh, it's connected. Uh, I named this Hexaware, I just called it uh, Daryl's Hexaware, and uh, you can see that it's uh, the little cloud icon there is on, so it's collecting data and sending it to the cloud. And um, you can see the, the state of the battery, the temperature, humidity, and um, we'll switch over here to the Hexaware get it up here where I can see it fairly well. And um, you can see uh, the Bluetooth is on, it's connected. The It gets the date and the time from the phone and it's got the little um, status monitor. It shows I've, I've got some email that I've received. But we're gonna go into the menu and we're gonna go into um, apps and there's motion, the flashlight. We're going to go into, I'll, I'll keep scrolling just to sh show you some of the other, some of the apps that are already built in. You got weather, so you're going to get the temperature and humidity data, the motion data, and uh, we'll get back to the fitness. Though so you can uh, count the number of steps, but what we're going for here with, uh, with uh, my project that I'm working on here we're going to measure heart rate. And we're going to tell it to start measuring the heart rate. And I will leave it there on my wrist. It may not get a good heart rate because I don't have it securely fastened, but you can clearly see on the app on the phone there as I'm connected with heart rate and you're actually seeing you're actually seeing the data then it's collecting, it's sending the heart rate to the phone. So uh, during the afternoon um, in, uh, in this example, I, I wore it for several hours and uh, collected some, some heart rate data. Okay, and we'll just uh, jump over here and we're going to go to the uh, website they talked about in the other segment and there it is 
we're going to sign in and we're going to see that uh, we're we're collecting some data sensors and um, you've got some all the different sensors we click on heart rate now I just want to point this out and I mentioned in the other segment I don't I don't think that all the software is got everything completely worked out yet because I for this purpose of measuring the heart rate heart rate while exercising I did want to set some alarm so if I uh, if the heart rate gets to an upper limit um, I wanted to um, be able to get an alarm and so I know that I've hit the upper rate so it's going to say um, for uh, mild walking, I didn't want to go more than uh, higher than 96 on the heart rate. But um, I set it, the alarm, the alarm high is on, but I get a very illogical warning there saying the value must be higher than 40. Well, I do have the value higher than 40 and I can't press the save button. So I don't know, uh, I, don't, I don't think all the, uh, all the bugs are worked out of the software yet. So. Uh, and and what's funny here, you can also see the uh, the other device that I tried to connect with the iPhone. I named it My Hexiware. It it actually um, was connected long enough for it to show up here on the cloud, but I don't have any I don't have any sensor data. So so we go back to readings and. Um, And this is this is where it would show up. Then I'd click on the heart rate. Um, and while I'm talking here, I'll see if I can uh, kind of just hold it firmly in place and and see if we can um, start picking up and seeing some of the data, maybe making it up here to the cloud here. But uh, while I was wearing it uh, in the afternoon, um, um, yeah, there. There it just picked up. It just picked up a, a reading uh, at uh, 0038, and uh, it will chart then the uh, the heart rate that it was measurement during while you're exercising. So um, what I'd like to see would be the way to um, keep or archive this data. Um, it'd be good, you know, while you're monitoring it, while you're exercising, and say you get back to your computer. And you want to look at what your uh, heart rate was during your exercise session, but it doesn't seem to be persistent. Uh, you can't save it or drop it into a spreadsheet or anything. It just gives you just the the most recent data that you've collected. Um, the other thing I noticed um, while I was doing this experiment, I was taking my heart rate the old-fashioned way by just measuring my pulse on my wrist. And um, the Hexaware uh, was very consistently lower than the actual heart rate that I was getting, even at the peak of the exercise. Um, it, it did it did reflect that the heart rate did go up while I was doing the some strenuous part of the walk, but it um, was consistently lower than the measurements I was getting. So if I wanted to be completely scientific about this, I would. Um, have a logbook, uh, maybe have another device um, to measure heart rate with and log it and compare it with the data that I got with the Hexaware to be uh, completely scientific. But uh, for the purpose of a demonstration, um, I think that, that I've been able to, to make my point. So um, I will click that, drop that back. And, um, but um, that's uh, that's the uh, the data. The Hexaware is um, paired with the app on the Android phone, and the app on the Android phone works very consistently and and holds a connection. It's held the connection uh, for the entire afternoon, several hours, and um, and I have collected some data. So um, the last thing I wanted to cover. In the video is um, 
doing uh, some custom programming or develop, uh, bu building an app to maybe, like I said, the one thing I'd like to do is be capture the data and persist it. And maybe that's entirely possible uh, with, uh, there's a, a service here called evothings.com. And I watched several of their, um, their webinars and it does give you then a, a fairly easy way to to uh, build an app in the uh, in the IDE, and then that will transfer to your phone. And in fact, we'll just jump to a new window here. I have the app um, pulled up here, and um, you uh, you get a, a token then from the app that you install in on your phone. Uh, you have the um, Make sure I call it the right thing. You got the Evo Things Studio that you install on your computer, and then you have the Evo Things uh, Viewer app that you install on your phone. So you actually write the um, write the app in the studio, which then using the the uh, the tokens then uh, links the two together. And then when you uh, want to start up the app, you can get a key that you put into the app. So that way, your uh, your account on the on the on the web links to the uh, the app on your phone. But um, we're just going to quickly um, look at some. They have some libraries, and they have some examples. Um, uh, what much to my dis to my dismay, they did not have any examples for the Hexaware. They have several other devices that they have uh, developed some examples for. Um, but um, we'll jump to the app here and let's see if I can uh, switch here and show it. And so here's the app on the, on the phone. And um, I've already put in the uh, the token to, to link the uh, to link it the app on the phone with the uh, with my computer, and then we'll switch back over here, and we're going to pick the Hello World example, and we're going to click on Run, and then so it's going to run the app. Here on my computer, switch back to the phone, and there you have it. The the Hello World example has run on the phone, and of course it's saying Hello World, and so it's just as simple as that. So so that is a good possibility of uh, being able to write an app for the for the Hexaware uh, to collect some of your data and manipulate the data, but of course in the uh, in the context of the of this video and this uh, project that that I'm uh, trying out here, I didn't uh, didn't actually develop write and develop an app, but it looks like it does give you a nice interface um, using uh, JSON and uh, JavaScript. Then to uh, get the to get the app that you've created up to your phone. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this three-part series that on the Hexaware. It's a fairly new device now that's available uh, for purchase. Uh, it was funded on Kickstarter um, probably uh, late in 2015, and the product now is available uh, for purchase. And, um, and kind of looked at uh, getting it uh, getting it connected to your phone uh, with Bluetooth, collecting the data, getting the data up to the cloud, and even you know a, a potential way of uh, writing writing a, an app to do uh, something useful with that data. And um, that uh, that I think it has a lot of potential. But it's uh, I mentioned in the series then what where I think it still has some work, especially with the Apple iOS. So um, 
that is going to finish it up for this series and uh, thank you for watching and uh, if you found the, the information useful I appreciate a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel uh, that way you'll get a notification when we posted some new videos and uh, again, as always, uh, thank you for watching and uh, stop by the blog at roanokehobby.info.